Vancouver, Canada, home of Iranian-born Mohamed Nasiri, the seven-time world and Olympic gold champion, 18-time world record breaker, and the winner of over 100 world-class competitions, has traveled from humble beginnings in an orphanage to become an internationally recognized sports star. They call him the champion of the century, but to those who know him, as Alexei, the legendary Russian weightlifter, said, He's a man who exemplifies the human story of triumph over hardship. Mohamed Nasiri is an inspiration for many young people who come from poverty and they come from a background that was against all odds. Uh, he went to Olympic 1968 where he won the gold, 1972 he won uh, silver in Olympic and 1976 in Montreal he won the bronze and uh, he was preparing himself for the uh, Olympic in Moscow where uh, 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 you know a funny story happens he there was all this chaotic situation in Iran and many people were uh, accusing Muhammad a crowd people went crazy they went after Muhammad and they started beating him up and he said at that moment all he was thinking about to protect his hand, putting his hands under his arm protected so he cannot, he doesn't damage his hand because he was preparing himself for Moscow where he was thinking that he's gonna get another uh, gold. Mohammed went to uh, win five uh, world championship uh, gold. He won many silver and many bronze and also he won many Asian championship. And altogether, as I hear, he won over 100 medal and, and uh, championship around the world in many international uh, uh, categories and many international competition. I am Mohammed Nasiri. I was born in Tehran in 1945. My family lived in an old neighborhood and we were extremely poor. My parents could not afford to raise me, so they took me to an orphanage where they had 400 to 500 children. It was a very strict place. For any small thing, they would beat us. They would whip us with a switch. Winter or summer, they would punish us. I was beaten often and suffered a lot. There was a large cafeteria. Every morning at 7, we would report there, clean and tidy, clothes pressed. Of course, we were not allowed to use an iron. Instead, we had to put our pants under our mattresses to press them every evening. Some of the orphans, God forbid, had weak bladders and would wet the bed. The pants that were placed under the mattresses for ironing would get wet. The next day, the children would be punished. However much they would protest the cold weather or that it wasn't their fault, it didn't matter. They were beaten and beaten badly. Every morning, before breakfast, we would be punished and then released to have our meal. After that, we would go to our lessons. Mostly all of us were just waiting to meet at lunchtime. There, we were happy. We laughed and played. We exchanged our food in the playground as if we were in the market. For example, one kid would say, Mohammed, I will give you sugar today for grapes tomorrow. And I would say, okay. We lived like that. My name is Wayne Wilson. I was national champion of Canada for seven years and Olympic team member in 1972. I remember the first time I ever saw Mohammed Nasiri or heard about him. It was the 1968 Olympics. I was an 18-year-old weightlifter who was just starting out lifting. I'd been lifting for a little over a year. And I was watching highlights of the Olympics on television live. And I saw this man I'd never seen before, I'd never heard of as a weightlifter do an amazing clean and jerk to win the gold medal at the 68 Olympics. And it was a, such an inspirational sight that I, my spine tingled with the excitement and the, and the, the awe of what he had done, the tremendous ex, uh, uh, accomplishments that he had done in making that amazing lift almost three times body weight. And I remember at that time of deciding that's what I want to do. I want to be a weightlifter like that guy. And he did an amazing backflip after he won the gold medal. And I remember he came out and he raised his arms before he started to lift and he said something I may 
uh, in all respect, I'm, I don't know if I'm quoting it correctly in Iranian, I think he said Allah Elise, and he put his arms up in the air and he went down and did this amazing lift and brought home the gold to the cheering and the, did a back flip and then it's just an amazing uh, moment in television for me. He was the champion, but he was also a man who made everyone on the team, and you could tell by the way he treated people, uh, treated them as worthy people, as equals, that made everyone feel comfortable in his presence, which is the, usually the mark of a great leader. And I remember seeing Mohammed from subsequent competitions and always noticed how well he interacted with every other country, regardless of the uh, language differences and religious difference and political difference of that era of the old Soviet Union and the East-West conflict and all the different things that were going on in the world at the time. East or West, no one uh, had any problems uh, identifying with Muhammad as a human being. Everyone uh, admired him, liked him, uh, some, I'd go so far to say, loved his personality and his generosity and kindness to everyone. And I over the years, I've always used Muhammad as an example of what an athlete should be in public and how they should deport themselves, how dignified they are, but also how generous and warm and humble the level of humility. For I was invited to the Olympic training camp for 1964 in Tokyo. My weight was only 50 kilograms. That was 6 kilograms underweight. In my first attempt outside Iran, I became 15th in the world. In Tokyo one evening, they asked me to do a national Iranian dance. I did it. The next day at breakfast, the Japanese cook came and showed me the daily paper. My picture was everywhere. I broke 25 world records in my career. For each one I broke, I won a gold. This is in addition to my Olympic and national medals. After the Olympics in Japan, I always came in first place. From 1966 to 1971, I always won gold. In 1972, I came in second, and this was such a shock. I never thought that would ever happen. I was one of the champions who always took a risk. I would always risk an extra 10 kilograms. This was my specialty. Lifting such a weight would put a great deal of distance between me and my nearest competitor. This is how I won the 1968 Mexican City Olympic gold. I lifted 150 kilograms in a clean jerk. My name is Paul Bjarnason. I was Canadian weightlifting champion in 1966 and 1970. And in 1968, I qualified to go to the Olympic Games. That was the same Olympic Games in 1968 in Mexico, in which Mohammed Nasiri competed and won the gold medal. No one who ever saw that would forget the backflip that Mohammed did at the end of that competition. I think that was the first time that was ever done in, in weightlifting, and it, uh, it surprised and delighted everyone. And uh, in that competition, he showed uh, what he was made of. He showed the kinds of uh, characteristics that made him a great lifter. Mohammed had a perfect physique for weightlifting. Uh, he had a tremendous fighting spirit. He obviously had uh, trained in the proper way to enable him not, not merely to break a, a single world record, but to break 18 world records in his career. Most lifters would be very pleased if they achieved a world record in their career, and so many thousands and thousands try and never achieve that goal. Mohammed broke world records one after the other. He broke 18 world records in his career. He won gold in 1968 at the Olympic Games. He competed in the 1972 Olympic Games in Munich. He won a silver medal there. He qualified yet again for the Olympics and won a bronze in 1976 in Montreal. He won the world championship, I believe, uh, at least four times. Uh, this would make Mohammed one of the greatest weightlifters in modern history, in history, period. Uh, along with, uh, along with Alexia, along with Tommy Kono, along with all the great names in weightlifting. Uh, Mohammed Nasiri is uh, 
not only a great lifter in the, in the physical sense, but he's the kind of person who makes you feel welcome the moment you meet him. Even if, uh, even if he knows you only by sight or has never met you yet, you feel that here is a man who is humble and open and welcoming. And that's a wonderful attribute for a weightlifter to have. Um, it, it's, it's just what caps off his, uh, what shall we say, well-roundedness as a, as a great athlete. Doug Hepburn was the, the only weightlifter in Canada to ever win the world championship. He did that in 1953, and he was uh, declared the strongest man in the world at that time. And uh, as Doug watched uh, the development of weightlifting over the years, uh, Mohammed Nasiri became one of his favorite weightlifters. And uh, that's kind of a testimony to Mohammed that this man who had won the world championship so many years before and had watched so many great champions singled out Mohammed Nasiri as uh, one of his favorites and one of the greatest lifters who ever lived. I was a Quran and I was a Let's go back to my childhood. One day, when I was sick and placed in the orphanage hospital, I just decided to run away. Wearing a hospital gown, I gripped the Quran in my hands, closed my eyes and shouted, Ya Ali! and jumped from the second floor to the ground. I landed in front of the neighbor's doorway. The owner of the house came running out at the sound of the crash. He grabbed onto me and I begged him not to send me back to the orphanage. I said, I had not seen my parents for a long time and I missed them. So the man let me go. During that time, the orphanage supervisors discovered that I was missing and came after me. As I was walking the streets, in a long white gown from the hospital, with a Quran in my hand, I started chanting Arabic so people would think that I was an Arab on vacation. I went to my house and saw the door was open. When I walked through the entrance, I saw my mother washing clothes. When she noticed me, she screamed with joy. She was happy to see me. I slept there that night. My family loved me, but poverty made it impossible for them to support me. The next day, two orphanage supervisors came and took me back to the hospital again. Life got better eventually. One big highlight was that I changed my old drab blanket to a colorful one. All in all, we were happy. All the children were happy that they finally changed the decoration of the orphanage. We grew up with discipline. Not many people could endure that kind of discipline as a child. We got on with things and accepted our lives. They woke us up at 4 a.m. like a military camp. We were cadets and we volunteered in the community. It was beautiful to do that. It gave us an excellent work ethic. The cadet leaders taught us how beautiful service to others can be. A cadet must do one good deed a day. They asked us to serve and we would go to the hospital to help people. Slowly, I turned to sports and I would practice gymnastics. Even so, I still remained a cadet. As I grew up, my body strengthened. In gymnastics, I rose to the title of national champion of Moran. Salam. My name is Don Bell, and I'm the Member of Parliament for North Vancouver in the Government of Canada. Uh, it is my pleasure to uh, speak to you today and tell you a little bit about uh, my association with people, uh, Persians, who have come to Canada to make it their home and who come here to visit. Uh, North Vancouver, and in fact the whole North Shore, is a very popular area in Canada. It's one of the two main areas, uh, Toronto and Greater Vancouver and the North Shore, that uh, people from Iran uh, feel that it's very much like Tehran, so I'm told, and they feel very comfortable here. People from Iran, the Persians that I have met that have come to Canada, are very good citizens. They're, they are very interested in Canada. They want to be part of Canadian society. Um, they uh, bring their culture to Canada, and it enriches us. It makes it, uh, Canada is a mosaic of a variety of cultures. Now, examples uh, that I've got um, of, of gentlemen that I've met, one is Mohammed Nasiri, uh, who is a, a very famous uh, Persian uh, in the uh, sporting world. He's a world champion, uh, been to four Olympics, and won very many titles uh, in his field of weightlifting. Uh, can lift three times, I think he's the only person that can lift three times his own weight. Um, 
and he's one, known as one of the athletes of the century. My name is Dieter Stam. I'm coach of the Semi Weightlifting Club here in South Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. And I've come to talk to you about Mohammed Nasiri, one of the finest weightlifters that was ever produced on this planet. I had the good fortune to meet Mohammed Nasiri in 1973, the fall of 1973, at the Senior World Championships in Havana, Cuba. This was an exciting competition for me as a referee. It was an exciting competition for Mohammed Nasiri in that he was world champion and knew he would be able to defend his world championship title and set some new world records. However, at this particular competition, Mohammed Nasiri was a little bit too heavy. He tried as best he could to make body weight, but to no avail. Turned out just before we in closed, we had to shave off all his hair. He did finally make his weight. He did compete. He did retain his world championship and he set new world records. One problem I always had during my career was that I had to lose 12 pounds for every competition. Since my body was mostly muscle, it was very difficult. I had to sit many hours in a sauna and take diuretic pills. At one stage, I went to Iraq to coach a team for a competition. There were political problems that I did not know about. I planned to do a pilgrimage while in Iraq. I prayed at the shrine of Imam Riza. Suddenly, the Shah of Iran called and said he did not want me to coach. He wanted me to compete the next night instead. I had to lose 10 pounds in one night. There was no choice but to compete. There was no good sauna. I found one facility only and wrapped myself in a blanket. I stayed there for eight hours, from 6 or 7 a.m. until 3 in the afternoon. It still was not enough, so I took three laxatives to clear my body of water. I couldn't walk and my eyes would not open. It was a harsh time. I was near death. How was I to compete? The Saint Imam Ali helped me. He helped me with my willpower under impossible circumstances. I collapsed. A teammate came as a joke and read me my last rites. Since I had prayed for help, I suddenly began to feel as tall as a lamppost as I was warming up for the match. That's how I felt. You would never believe it. I went to the match and won first place. When we returned to Iran, Hussein Hassari, a reporter traveling with us, wrote in the newspaper, Mohammed Nasari pulled a gold out of hell. Uh, my name is Mlajan Mike Talik. I am uh, a vice president of Canadian Weightlifting Federation over 14 years. I'm a member of the International Weightlifting Federation Technical Committee and I'm a member of Canadian Olympic Association. I, I know uh, Mohammed Nasiri a long time. Uh, during uh, my, my career in weightlifting, I was weightlifter in uh, former Yugoslavia and uh, he was for us like idol. Everybody talking about him because he was one of the greatest uh, athletes in the world for us. I have a chance to meet him first time in Barcelona Olympic Games where I was coach for the Bosnian Olympic team, weightlifting team. And after on many occasions, I saw him here, here in Canada when I came in Canada because he lived in Vancouver in the same city where I live. By the way, I just remembered something. To become a champion, I made a sacred vow that I would make a holy pilgrimage to the shrine of Imam Riza by walking. This was about a thousand kilometers away. I got a bag ready and put it on my back and traveled in that direction. It took over a month. I would sleep in the fields at night, or sometimes people in the villages would invite me to dinner. My name is Mike Stafford. I'm a trainer. I spend my days watching people move, and watching Mohammed move is poetry. He is so smooth, so well balanced. I 
I continued with various competitions. After Cuba, where I won four golds in 1973, we went to Peru and Latin America. Everything was well. The competition went well, but in the second clean jerk match, I fractured a thumb. I couldn't continue even though I won the silver. I went to the doctor who put a cast on me. As we were returning to Iran, we were informed that we must attend the Asian Championship in the Philippines. My hand was in a cast and I was not training. We stopped in France where they removed the cast, gave me an injection, and we went to the Philippines to compete. I won the gold. All champions want to bring gold for their country and their people. They suffer all the hardships to do this. You can say that becoming a world champion is easy, but maintaining it for a significant length of time is difficult. For 20 years, I maintain a champion status. However, I know it is the will of God and not my own power. He gave me the stamina, the power, the patience, and the will to win. In the 70s, I came from a gathering about 1 o'clock in the morning. I saw a crowd forming at the scene of a car accident. It had hit a tree. I went closer and discovered the driver was an American diplomat. He was trapped and everyone was waiting for an ambulance to come free him. A few people in the crowd said, Mr. Nasiri, come and help. I prayed for strength saying, Ya Ali, as I had throughout my career. The moment I uttered Ali, I grabbed the steering wheel, ripped it from the car and freed the man. The man later told newspapers in America and they published the story. I would lift all the weights in the name of Ali. People would ask me, who is Ali? And I would answer that this is one of the saints in Islam. It is a name of power. Ali lifted the gate of Kibar. I was always trained and kept myself in good condition, but the name of Ali gave me additional strength. Now I live in Canada, 11 years in Spain, 11 years in Canada. I have been away from Iran for 22 years, but it is an honor to be born in Iran and be a Muslim. No one can take these from me. It is the duty of Muslims to love and respect the country they live in and respect the customs of that country. We should all follow the path of wisdom. We should always respect our elders. Knowledge and kindness is what we all share wherever we live. I hope you are all successful and well. Mr. Nasiri continues to live a quiet life right here in Vancouver, and as Hossein Reza Zadeh, the current weightlifter champion, said, his nobility of character is a beacon to his friends, while his international achievements serve as a light to those who aspire to greatness.